I love when he says that. Share your lesson, my child. <laughs> so, uh, I just finished this chapter. So, um, cognitive dissonance is the mental discomfort uh, that results from holding two conflicting beliefs, values, or attitudes. People tend to seek consistency in their attitudes and perceptions. Um, so this conflict causes unpleasant feelings of um, unease or discomfort. Uh, I, I like to think um, when he said that, throw everything you thought you knew out the window. Um, this is what the title should be on this chapter. Um, <laughs> so I got a lot of notes, so I got to try to figure out how to put this together for you guys, too. So it's uh, the inconsistency between what people believe um, and how they behave. Um, it motivates them to engage in actions that will help minimize feelings of discomfort. Uh, people attempt to re relieve this tension in different ways, such as by rejecting, explaining away, or avoiding new information. Uh, oftentimes, if a child is raised with narcissistic parents uh, and or caregivers, um, they uh, were surrounded by the whole, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Um, so it creates a, like, stuck syndrome, if you will, um, in, in the subconscious anyway. Uh, even if you just had an absent parent, uh, like a workaholic, um, they may have seen to your like physical needs of your meals and your clothing and such. Um, but um, under the radar, I'd say, uh, remained dismissive to your emotional needs um, for various reasons. The nurturing component was somehow missing. Uh, so you mold into like a primary, like a, like a personality mixed with a subconscious wound and then this like mix of expectations. Uh, then you are overcome with this uh, longing for attraction um, and needs met, which is what we all crave, right? Um, in any kind of relationships, this could be romantic or friendship. Uh, but the law of attraction states and then verifies um, that we attract more often what we are not what we want. Um, so uh, just a mock-up example um, for us to view like the problem and then luckily discuss uh, like some more solutions. Um, so we take uh, a person with like repressed uh, or uh, diminished aura, if you will, because you don't realize your parents created this like rejection defective wound or this like unpredictable like uh, parental alienation. Uh, then bonus, we all do it. Uh, the young, dumb, you know, syndrome where we're chasing crushes, uh, but claim, you know, we're looking for love. Uh, but none of us have a clue at this point, um, what, uh, it is even really. We begin a string of a variety of people, um, all wounded too, or settle for the lengthy, like toxic relationship uh, just so we could say that we have someone uh, but it turns out to be very unhealthy uh, because of what law of attraction teaches us we realize we choose uh, partners or friends um, that are dishonest uh, unfaithful or not at all you know truly wanting that romantic or that you know true friendship even uh, even when sex is involved, uh, because it's just that. We selected with uh, a perceived abandonment. So we are now mixing it after a bad breakup um, or multiple, the unsafe to be, uh, you know, now we're vulnerable or fear commitment. Um, now even more unresolved trauma. Um, at some point, you have to stop and look, you know, attraction desire. Yes, um, you want to attract and be attracted to, though. Uh, but you have to realize you have to be what you want, uh, not just want it. Um, if you fear intimacy or lack the attachment component like that uh, is you, whether you decide to learn that was you, let alone work on that, you know, subconscious shift we were talking about before, uh, you know, change, then that is what you'll attract. Uh, it's like the Peter Pan syndrome. Uh, you, you know, right? Like you want to fly. So let's say we're, I'm going to walk over there and I'm going to go to the ledge and I'm going to jump, but I'm going to think fly and let's see what happens, right? 
um, or you see like the person over there and, um, you know, I want passion or I want loyalty or I want something real with them, you know, so let's make sure, you know, to give them that uh, so you can receive it, right? Now, with the obvious expectation, though, that both people are healed, uh, even if you were in like bad situations before, you don't have to continue bad. Remember, it's that subconscious shift and choice. Um, you got to be happy yourself and look for happy. And when it's not happy, don't stay there, okay? <laughs> Compromise is very possible. Uh, you know what one of my favorite other words that comes to mind is? Communication. Meaning you talk about things before they happen, not just after. Um... So, signs of uh, dis, uh, this, the, it's cognitive dissonance, but what I was trying to think of is um, everyone experiences it to some degree, but that doesn't mean um, that it always is easy to recognize. Um, some signs that what you are feeling might be related to um, this is when you're feeling uncomfortable um, before doing something or making, you know, decisions. Trying to justify or rationalize a decision uh, you had made or action you had taken. Uh, feeling embarrassed or ashamed about something you had done and tried to hide your actions from other people. Uh, experiencing guilt or regret about something you had done in the past. Doing things because of, um, you know, social pressure, even. I have a note here. I want to see what I said. Oh, I was talking about rested development. Instead of telling a lie, you know, actually being, um, you know, vulnerable. Uh, common sense, I'm told, is supposed to be, you know, freely given. But uh, a fear of missing out rises sometimes bigger and even if it wasn't something you wanted to do um you know examples of this is like what does the inconsistency related discomfort um look like in everyday life here are just a few examples you may notice um you may want to be healthy but you don't exercise regularly or you eat a nutritious diet um You feel guilty as a result. You know that smoking or drinking, you know, too much is harmful to your health, but you do it anyway. You rationalize this action by pointing to your high stress levels. Um, you would like to build up your savings, but tend to spend extra cash as soon as you get it. Uh, you regret this decision later, such as when facing an unexpected expense that you don't uh, have, you know, the money to cover. So you have a long to-do list, but spend the day watching your favorite shows instead. Um, you don't want your spouse to know, so you try to make it look like you worked hard all day. Uh, several television shows and movies um, contain characters experiencing this cognitive dissonance. Um, I'll give you some examples. Are like Mean Girls, um, Friends, uh, The Truman Show, uh, Stand By Me, and um, oh, oh, Irresistible. These are a number of different situations that uh, can create conflicts that lead to cognitive dissonance. Uh, forced compliance. Um, sometimes you might find yourself engaging in behaviors that are oppressed to your own beliefs due to external uh, expectation at work, school, or even in a social situation. Uh, this might involve going along with something due to peer pressure or doing something at work to avoid getting fired. Um, new information. Sometimes learning new information can lead to feelings of this cognitive dissonance. For example, if you engage in a behavior that you later learn is harmful, it can lead to feelings of discomfort. Uh, people sometimes deal with this by finding ways to justify um, their behaviors or finding ways to discredit or ignore new information. Decisions. Uh, people make decisions both large and small on a daily basis, obviously. But um, we were, but when they're forced to similar choices, we're often left with feelings of dissonance uh, because both options are equally appealing. 
Uh, but once a choice has been made, however, people need to find a way to reduce um, these feelings of discomfort. So we accomplish this by justifying why our choice was the best option. So we can believe that we make the right decision. So let's recap. Uh, we realize this uh, cognitive dissonance uh, can be caused by feeling forced to do something, learning new information, or when faced with a decision between two similar choices. So what influences um, this behavior, you might ask? Uh, the degree of dissonance experienced can depend on a few different factors. Uh, among them are how highly or particularly um, the belief is valued and the degree to which uh, the beliefs are inconsistent. The overall strength of the dissonance can um, have uh, an influence and on several factors even, including uh, like the importance attached to each belief, uh, conditions, and even cognitions um, that are more personal, such as like beliefs about yourself and highly valued, uh, tend to result in greater dissonance. The number of dissonant beliefs, uh, the more dissonant or clashing, I'd say, thoughts um, you have, the greater the strength of the dissonance. Um, so cognitive dissonance uh, can often have a powerful influence. You know, how you feel. It is also, it motivates you to take action to reduce feelings of discomfort. So let's talk about, uh, you know, how this behavior feels. Because it can make people feel uneasy and uncomfortable. This is particularly true if the dis uh, disparity between their beliefs and behaviors involves something that is um, central to their own sense of self. Uh, for example, behaving in ways that are not aligned with their personal values may result in intense feelings of discomfort. Your behavior uh, contradicts not just the beliefs you have about the world, um, but also the beliefs that you have about yourself. Uh, this discomfort can manifest itself in a variety of ways. Uh, someone with this cognitive dissonance uh, may feel like anxiety, embarrassment, uh, regret, sadness, shame, stress. Uh, cognitive dissonance uh, can even influence how people um, feel about and view themselves. So it's leading to negative feelings or self-esteem and self-worth even about others now too. So the impact is because people want to avoid discomfort, um, which can have a wide range of effects. Uh, dissonance can play a role in how we act, we think, or um, you know when we make our decisions. We may engage in behaviors or adapt attitudes to help um, relieve this discomfort uh, caused by the conflict. So um, these are some things that a person might do to cope with these feelings. Um, like uh, adapting beliefs or ideas to help justify or explain away the conflict between their beliefs or their behaviors. Uh, this can sometimes involve blaming other people or outside factors, um, or they're hiding beliefs or behaviors from other people. Uh, people may feel ashamed of their conflicting beliefs and behaviors, and they're hiding their disparity from others to minimize their feelings of, you know, the shame and the guilt. Um, only seeking out information that confirms their existing beliefs. This phenomenon known as, um, oh, like confirmation bias, <laughs> but I like to call it selective ignorance, if you will, <laughs> because it affects the ability to think critically about a situation, but helps minimize feelings of dissonance. Uh, people like to believe that there are logical, consistent, and good about making decisions, of course. But cognitive dissonance uh, can interfere with the perceptions people uh, even hold about themselves and their abilities, which is why it can often lead to being wrong about other people, which only increases that so uncomfortable and unpleasant um, feeling, especially when they keep being shown, you know, how very wrong they are. Um, about that person or that belief or that behavior or that thought. You know, so when there's like this conflict between the cognitive, you know, your thoughts, your beliefs and your opinions and people, um, we take steps or should to reduce the dissonance and feelings of discomfort. Um, they can go about this a few different ways even. Uh, now we're adding more beliefs to outweigh 
So people who learn, you know, like the greenhouse emissions, right, uh, result in global warming, right? Uh, someone might experience feelings of dissonance if they drive a gas guzzling uh, vehicle. Um, so to reduce this dissonance, they may seek out new information that overrides the belief that greenhouse um, gases uh, contribute to global warming, right? They get a different vehicle as soon as they can anyway, right? Uh, so it's about reducing the importance of the conflicting belief. Um, a person who cares about their health might be disturbed to learn that sitting for long periods of during the day is likely to shorten a lifespan. Since they work all day in an office and spend a great deal of time sitting, it is difficult to change their behavior. To deal with the feelings of discomfort, then, they might find some way of rationalizing the conflicting uh, cognition for instance, they may justify their sedentary behavior by saying that their own um, or other healthy behaviors, like eating sensibly and occasionally exercising, may make up for their largely um, sedentary life. So um, changing beliefs is about uh, changing the conflicting cognition is one of the most effective ways of dealing with dissonance. Uh, but it is also one of the most difficult, uh, particularly in the case of deeply held values and beliefs, such as religious or political uh, learnings, you know, from earlier life. So recap, some of the ways people reduce discomfort include seeking information uh, that aligns with and supports current beliefs, uh, reducing the conflict, you know, your belief is, is important, uh, but sometimes you need to change your belief to reduce the feeling of discomfort, especially if it doesn't align with the truth. Uh, now, let's finish off with the potential pitfalls. Uh, sometimes the ways that people resolve uh, cognitive um, dissonance is they, they contribute to unhealthy behaviors or poor decisions. Uh, in a theory of cognitive dissonance, it's a psychologist... Um, Leon Festiner, I can look it up real quick, I think that's his name, um, where he described his phenomenon, uh, but more importantly gives an example of how a person might deal with uh, dissonance related to a health behavior uh, by discussing individuals who continue to smoke even though they know it is harmful to their health. You know, as an example, according to the Festiner theory, there are a few ways that a person might resolve this problem. This, they might decide that they uh, value smoking more than they value health, um, deeming this behavior, you know, worth it in terms of risk versus reward. But um, they may uh, minimize potential drawbacks. Let me pull up. I'm going to have him. I'll let him know I was including just a little bit of his because it's his stuff, but I, it, it's already written for my book, and I want to just, and by all means, please look up the information, but it's it's more just the quick part about convincing themselves that the negative health effects have been overstated, or by believing they cannot avoid each uh, possible risk out there, right? Like, well, he got cancer, but I'm not going to get it. Um, so by using these types of explanations, the smoker is able to reduce the dissonance and continue the unhealthy behavior. So, again, remember we were talking about like that conscious, uh, it's, a, it's a mind shift. So, he first proposed the theory of uh, cognitive dissonance centered on how people try to reach internal consistency. Uh, he suggests that people have an inner need to uh, ensure that their beliefs and behaviors are consistent. Um, I know I had inconsistent or conflicting beliefs, I wrote, lead to uh, oh disharmony, uh, which people strive to avoid. Um, and then, um, I like the, where he was talking about where the condition, uh, you have to remember leads to the activity oriented towards, uh, your dissonance reduction, just as hunger leads towards activity oriented towards hunger or reaction, like you feed yourself. Um, it is a very different motivation from what psychologists are using to deal with, but as we, uh, shall see, you know, nonetheless, uh, you can become powerful, right? It's called... Um, self-empowerment. Um, you play a role in many values and your judgments, your decisions, and your evaluations, you know, even of yourself. Uh, becoming aware of how conflicting beliefs impact the decision-making process in a way to improve your ability to make faster 
and more accurate choices. And remember, it's not always just you anymore because if you have children, you're working with other people, you're in school with other people, you know, how you're acting or, or reacting um, affects others. So um, try to, uh, you know, stop mismatching your between your beliefs and actions and your stress um, so that you can lead to feelings uh, of more comfort than discomfort, right? And sometimes, you know, coping choices, um, you know, less negative impacts. Uh, feelings sometimes lead to change and growth, which is what we all want, right? All right. I'm going to get going. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.